Hey everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys the weekly soul connection reading. And so this is going to be for today's date, which is Monday, May 4th, going all the way until Sunday, May 10th. So these can be for any kind of a connection, twin flame, soulmate, however you resonate with this particular situation. We're just going to be focusing on the energies between you and them. And so I do tend to channel for those that are in some sort of a separation or challenge. So if that's not your story, just take the messages as they resonate for you. And if it is your story, still do the same. Whatever messages come through, if it just doesn't seem to be for you, just go ahead and set it aside. You don't have to take them. So as usual, I will let you guys know what I'm using as I shuffle each deck, but I am using all 11 of my self-created decks here today. So if you're interested in any of those, they will be available for purchase in my website. But if you're international, email me and I'll send you a special link to order them. Today's Organite, we're going to be using from my friend Michelle, Wing and Bell. This is the Divine Connection Organite. So everything will be listed down below. Let's get started, you guys. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into my connections for the modern world. We're going to take a look and see how is your person affecting you right now? Okay. So this just means what are the energies that they're holding on to? Um, maybe certain behaviors that they're displaying certain things that have already been, you know, um, had, have occurred or taken place. How is this affecting you currently? Now, the thing is people can only affect us if we allow them to. So if there's anything negative that's come through here, it's really going to showcase to us ways that we can perhaps maybe, um, you know, be aware of that, to be aware of how we're allowing this person to affect us at this time. We're going to combine it with the crystal visions tarot. So let's get into it. How is this person's behavior, whether it's current or past affecting us at this time? We have choices. Okay. So the choices that this person has made affects us. We allow it, I should say, to affect us. It could be a lack of a choice as well. Let's clarify. With the King of Pentacles. King of Pentacles is about responsibility. The King of Pentacles is also somebody who could be very focused on work in the material world. So it could be that uh, you are affected or have been affected for a while um, from this King of Pentacles type of energy. It's a very earthy energy. And so it could be that they made certain decisions based on responsibility. So if they have other obligations or they have, you know, um, something that they're trying to accomplish in the material world, those choices have affected you. So let's go ahead and get some more clarification as to how that has affected you or how you've allowed it to. We have the nine of pentacles. Okay. So I'm getting, um, some of you, yes, it could be that someone is perhaps in another relationship, but I'm getting for others. That's not the case somebody's need to perhaps be single, do their own thing, build their own empire, focus solely on work has affected your connection. So I feel like there's, there's a separation here. I feel like there's a separation because of pentacles, energy, responsibilities, you know, um, financial things, material things. Let's get one last card. Another pentacles energy, two of pentacles. So for some of you, it could be a choice between you and another person, or it could be a choice between you and work. So this choice to go in this direction, it does affect the situation. It may affect you. And on the bottom of the deck, we have the queen of swords. So it could bring out this queen of swords energy and you, as in now you're on the defense. Now you're looking at things very logically and practically and thinking to yourself, does this person actually really care about me? If they could just, you know, continue to either put me on hold or continue to make a choice over me, do they really care? So that could have put you into that very defensive type of energy because of whatever choice this was or whatever choice they have made. So let's go ahead and I'm going to get three cards. So let's take a look and see what other energies they're displaying that are affecting you. Yeah, we have burned out. And you might just be now at a point where you just feel burned out. You're just burned out on this person. You're burned out on, let's just say, waiting on this person to take responsibility or to do something or to take some sort of action towards you. So that might be why you're in the Queen of Swords energy. You're just maybe even ready to cut this person out altogether. Yeah, see, Six of Swords. This is the desire to move on. This is the desire to just kind of like, you know, I'm just so burned out. I just want relief. I just want to feel good. I just, I just basically don't want the stress in my life. I feel like this person has definitely burned you out. 
they've either waited too long or they there's just too much going on there's too much back and forth to a pentacles juggling energy and you might just be tired of it that's what i'm seeing here so let's go ahead and get another card yeah now <laughs> it's like you go from the queen of swords energy to the queen of wands there could of course be two queens here for some not all that's only if you're aware of a third party situation but i feel like you're the queen of wands the queen of wands she just wants to be confident she wants to be happy she wants to live her life to the fullest she doesn't want to waste any more time being burned out on this situation she wants to go towards something amazing she wants to grow and it oh see eight of cups you just want to walk away so this is an interesting reading here, you guys. So if you're not resonating with the messages so far, this might not be your reading this week, but there could be a reason why this is coming out in the collective right now. Maybe some people are really burned out on this connection. You're just kind of to that point where you're just not sure if, it, if it's something that's going to work. You're not sure if you want to continue to invest in this situation. You're not sure if waiting around for this person to either return or change or come back or whatever's going on here is such a good idea anymore. You may just be kind of disconnecting and deciding to invest more in yourself, which is actually the way to go. I would suggest that to anybody. I wouldn't suggest anybody wait around and put all of your eggs or all of your happiness into someone else's basket. So... This is about you wanting to move forward and evolve and just go into another direction. You don't want to further burn yourself out. Take your beautiful queen of wands energy and burn yourself out on this individual that seems to be kind of stuck in their ways, or they seem to be okay to be alone, or they seem to just be, okay, they seem to be okay with being stuck perhaps in another situation. And you're at that point where you're just kind of like, you know what? I'm ready to move forward. Two cards indicating movement forward, six of swords, eight of cups, not an accident. You're that queen of wands. You're ready to move forward. That's what I'm seeing. You want to grow. You don't want to, you don't want to burn your passion out. You know, you have a lot of life in you yet or still to live and you, you want to make it count. Last message. Hungry. I feel like this person keeps you hungry. This person keeps you at a, like at a, at a, at a distance constantly you know, you, you feel like you need something from this person. They, they don't give you enough. And so you're constantly feeling hungry. You're not satisfied. This person is either stringing you along or they just always keep you in that hungry state. But I feel like it says more about them than it does about you. Somebody that's doing this is usually there's a defense mechanism or there's some kind of energy here where they feel, you know, more in control or power to keep someone hungry for them. So I feel like there's this message here about that. Okay, so let's take a look and see what cards want to clarify this. Eight of Wands, see? It keeps you continuously pursuing them, perhaps making contact with them, reaching out to them. <laughs> You're dealing with an individual that, um, like I said, is either in another situation or they're alone, and they're perfectly fine to keep you at a distance, and that's not what you want. You want to move forward. You want to, you, you don't want to play these games. You don't want to go back and forth. And so this is an energy where you're cutting that out. You're cutting that energy out. You're no longer willing to wait around. Yep. Four swords. You want to heal. You want to disengage. You want to pull away from that kind of energy. You don't want to pursue this individual any longer. So somebody's taking their power back is what I'm seeing here in the collective. Someone's taking their power back and they're just, they're just tired. Yep. Nine of swords. They're tired of this energy. They're tired of being in a state of anxiety. They're tired of being, um, just running around in their mind space, you know, creating worst case scenarios. They're tired of the anxiety. They can't deal with it anymore. They, they, they no longer want to be starved. So the thing is, you guys, this person's behavior, it has affected you in a negative way, but in some interesting way. It's actually helped you. It's, it's been a catalyst for your growth to realize that you're worth so much more. You you're worth so much more than what this person is able to give to you or to offer you at this time. This doesn't mean that this person can't change perhaps down the line that you guys, guys might not have an opportunity later on, but I'm getting here that if you've been waiting around for this person, to do something and they're not really making any moves and you're just constantly in the starvation state, it may be time to move forward and to go in another direction. And that doesn't mean that you have to choose another partner, but it just means that you need to choose yourself. 
And so if you've been putting a lot of time and effort and dedication towards this particular person, I'm getting here that it's about time that you start feeding yourself. That's really empowering, you guys. Really empowering energy. So let's see how you're affecting them, okay? Let's turn the tables and see how you're affecting them. So let's go ahead and go into another deck. We're gonna go into, whoops. We're gonna go into, let's see. Let's go into the Spirits of Darkness and Light deck. And let's combine it with this deck right here, which is the Honest Truth Tarot. Okay. How is your energy affecting this person? This is my spirits of darkness and light. I don't know if I said that. Okay. Wow. Feminine spirit. So you're <laughs> jumping into that, uh, that, that uh, queen of wands energy. Because on the bottom of the deck, that kind of told me maybe where you were at before, very defensive, maybe trying to communicate with this person. And all of a sudden you're in the feminine spirit of being receptive, just allowing, letting things happen. Just, you know, allowing spirit to basically bring forth to you what's meant for you. So you're not willing to fight anymore. You're not willing to burn yourself out anymore on this situation or this person. You're just allowing, you're letting go. It's beautiful energy here. So I feel like your person is being affected by this energy shift within you. Wow. You're now going towards your 10 of cups. So that's where your, that's where your, your energy is, is now going towards things that make you happy. Yes, of course, this person could have been a part of your ultimate plan, your ultimate 10 of cups. Maybe that's what you've been working on for a while, but I'm just seeing here at this particular time that instead of chasing that, you're just basically allowing that if it's meant to be with this person, that's great. You won't deny it, but you're not chasing it anymore and you're not trying to make it happen. You're instead being very nurturing to yourself and receptive and just trusting your intuition moving forward. So you're out of that queen of swords energy. You're just allowing queen of wands feeling good about themselves and just wanting to move forward in a positive way. So I feel like your person is being affected because they might feel this empowerment coming from you, this letting go that's occurring within you. So what does that do? It turns the wheel and the connection. So it creates some sort of change. It creates something to happen. It's a turning point. It's a turning point for this person. It causes them, see, look at this, 10, 10. It causes some sort of completion in a cycle. There's some sort of a close or, a, or just like a coming full circle in a karmic cycle or a karmic pattern. So it might be something that you needed to clear within yourself. And now that you're clearing this energy, now your luck is about ready to change. Something could be changing perhaps in this connection or the situation. Last energy here. Yeah, five of pentacles, hard times, rejection. I feel like your person is really gonna feel shut out. They're really gonna feel shut out in the cold by your energy. And it's not like you're even doing it on purpose. You're just shifting something within you vibrationally. And when you do, do this, it's literally going to affect your person. It is gonna create a change, number five. It is gonna make them think. It is going to make them feel somewhat cut away from you. And when people feel cut off or people feel rejected or cut away, it does create a response in them. So I feel like there's some sort of change that your person is going to be experiencing because of your more receptive pulling away and just allowing kind of energy. It's amazing. All right, so let's continue. What else? See, spirit of alchemy. All very powerful energies. This is like the magician's energy. You're manifesting, you're utilizing your skills rather than burning yourself out. You're transmuting energy rather than, you know, fighting against it. You're, you're making, you're, you're like turning a situation, maybe something even challenging or negative into something that is a blessing, something that's going to work for you rather than working against you. So you're learning to work with the energies differently now of this person and this connection. And what that is doing is it's literally causing some sort of an effect in this person. See, it's causing them to, it's almost like in a way it's forcing them to have to balance something within themselves. Whenever I see the wheel of fortune and the justice or even judgment in the same reading, this really tells me that there's a balancing of karmic justice or scales here certain wrongs, uh, behaviors that have created a lot of, um, issues and problems for, you know, um, you and them. 
I feel like things are getting now balanced out within this person. So you transmuting your energy actually forces this person and causes them to basically go within themselves and to balance out their own behavior. So you improving yourself actually helps this person to improve themselves because it forces them to have to sit with, the, with their own energy. Sometimes when we step out of the line of fire, this causes someone to really have to examine themselves because they can no longer blame you for their problems. So I feel like if you've been engaging with this person for a while and going back and forth and you've really gotten nowhere and it's just really just created more, um, you know, issues than not, this person can no longer blame you or, uh, you know, project onto you that you're, you're an issue or a problem. They have to sit with their energy. Interesting. What else? Three of Wands, it forces them to have to basically explore and make some sort of progress. It gives them an opportunity to basically see things from a new perspective is what I'm getting here. It illuminates things for them. It helps them to basically see themselves from a completely new perspective. It brings forth some sort of opportunity to work on themselves. So the only way that you and this person are going to really have a chance to really come together and have any kind of success is through this detachment, is through this just taking care of yourself type of energy. So if you've tried all different types of techniques and you've gotten nowhere, the reason why is because you can't force someone else to change. They have to change on their own accord. They have to change, you know, within just their own wisdom and understanding of things. You couldn't force this person to see things your way. You had to literally pull back. You had to literally just kind of take back your power and just focus on yourself. And when you do this, this actually creates change in other people. When you, when you shift your own vibration, it forces other people to have to either get on board with your same vibration or fall away from your life. And so there is a balancing here that's taking place with your connection with your person right now. They're either going to work for this connection or they're going to fall away from your life. And I'm getting either way, you're going to be fine. Either way, you're going to be completely okay with that decision because you're going to know that spirit is taking care of you. And that's why you're in that feminine spirit of being receptive to whatever's meant for you. Whatever that 10 of cups entails, you're going to take it. It's lovely, lovely energy. All right, last message. Spirit of the pumpkin. So there's about, a, this is about harvesting. This is also about autumn. So this is going to be maybe perhaps this season of fall and autumn. And also we have the energy of midnight. So these are like being up in the middle of the night, being awoken perhaps by a dream or just certain types of energies. Okay. I feel like you're affecting this person because of these shifts and changes that you're making. And so it might be that they're up late at night. We have the sun illuminating something. Okay. I feel like the sun is about, they're really seeing things very clearly. Your positive shifts, your positive energy is literally causing them to have to take a look at themselves. So continue to stay in that high vibration person watching this video, because it's really creating some positive shifts in this situation. Whatever dark energy that your person might be holding on to you, I feel like it's now turning to the light. It's coming out of that darkness and going towards the light. Yeah, we have Knight of Wands. So the Knight of Wands is somebody that is feeling restless. They're feeling like they want to take action. So your non-action, your receptive energy is literally causing this person to want to now pursue you and take action. Do you see that? Very interesting. How many more times can I say interesting? Somebody count. All right. Last message, page of wands, somebody who's going to freaking message you and make communication. So you see, when you pull away, this person suddenly comes back. This person suddenly makes some sort of communication towards you. They have energy now towards you because you are pulling your energy away from them. It's not about playing games, you guys, but this is just how energy works. When you focus, 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 and you pursue and you chase and you, you are engaged with all of that energy constantly, it's almost like it works in the opposite way of what you want. It almost repels a person from wanting to connect with you. When you pull away and you just focus and you just empower, you know, on yourself or you, you just empower power yourselves and you just focus on you. It's amazing how people come out of the woodworks when you just suddenly are just totally fine without them. Sometimes people don't like that. Sometimes somebody in their ego doesn't like the fact that you're no longer pursuing them or getting dramatic over them. So this person is something's going to be created here. 
you're going to create a stir or you're already creating a stir right now. You're causing this person to basically want to take some sort of action and message you. So I feel communication is on the horizon with them. Okay. And it might make you feel really good is what I'm getting here. But we do have the Knight of Wands and the Page of Wands. Is this person ready to commit? Is this person coming with communication? Is it, does it mean that they've changed? Does it mean that they're ready to basically, you know, go to that 10 of, 10 of cups energy with you? Nothing's guaranteed. This person might still kind of have a, a few shenanigans or games up their sleeve, but I feel like with your new energy, you're going to see right through it and you're going to be able to make a decision on whether or not you're going to put up with it or not. So I'm getting here in this reading, the person watching this video, you've got all the tools that you that you need to deal with this person in the future when they return. And you're going to be able to choose whether or not you want them in your life, not the other way around. So there's a taking back of power that's happening here. And that's a part of this karmic lesson and cycle for you and this person. That's what I see. All right, you guys. So let's now go ahead and move forward into the connection. So where are you guys at in this growth cycle and this connection? What is happening here? So we're going to go into my sister's deck, which is the queen of light 1111 divine connections Oracle. So let's see what's going on here in this growth cycle, this, this energy connection. Let's see what's taking place. What's going on with this connection. Okay. We have union. Interesting. So there is something that is happening with the both of you being connected energetically. That one here, we have testing the waters. So do you see you guys, when you let go, somebody wants to test, test the waters and come back into union. They want to basically give this another shot. I'm just saying something is happening here. And we have a doctor rebirth. Yep. A rebirth of this connection. Yeah. So this really tells me you guys that uh, your person, if they have been staying away from you or they have just been kind of like, you know, nonchalantly just dealing with your connection, I feel like you mirroring that energy back to them is really going to create some sort of shift moving forward. So let's go ahead and get down to some, um, lessons of this connection. Okay. This is the reclaim your power Oracle cards lessons of this connection that have been obtained or that are still in the process of being obtained. We have the queen of fire again, you guys, which is the queen of wands. So if that's not proof to you guys that there is some kind of energy here that's working in your favor, when you really focus on things that make you feel alive and passionate and you, it gives you a courage to move forward. You're strong. You have that spark, that charisma, you magnetically attract the things that you want. Why? Because you're not chasing after anything. You're allowing things to come to you. And this person is coming towards you. That's what I see here. So you've obtained or understood this lesson of the law of attraction of letting go and just allowing and being receptive. Uh-huh. Look at this. The fact that we have union and now we have divine union, this king of hearts comes for his queen of fire. Now, this doesn't guarantee that this will happen for everyone, but your newfound energy, your new vibrational shift is causing this person to want to come towards you. So we did get the page and the night before, now we're getting the king. So there is perhaps some sort of potential for growth here in this connection, a rebirthing. Let's start over. Let's do this because we feel connected to one another. God of connection. We're connected through our dreams. We're telepathically connected. I'm always thinking about you. You're always thinking about me. We empower one another. We're better together than alone. So I feel like someone is having a change of heart here. Somebody is feeling this connection very strongly because you're pulling away. You're no longer supplying this person with this energy from you and they are craving it. They want it. They are needing it. They realize how important it is to them. So you guys can have a new beginning and a fresh new start. Look at this. So you guys can start over on this journey together. So you guys can basically get on, uh, let's just say, get on path with, um, you know, just maybe doing certain things like certain life purpose and mission and things that you guys want to accomplish together. I really feel a lot of positive energy here. Yeah. See, it was a lost relationship. Maybe you've thought that this person forgot all about you. They haven't. They have not. Maybe you thought that this relationship was over for good. Maybe it's not. Okay. 
And again, that's not going to be for everybody, but this has definitely been a relationship that was lost somewhere along the line. A lot of things happened here. A lot of things happened to where people felt very lost. They, they felt, you know, forgotten about like their partner just didn't really care about them. But now suddenly someone is wanting to return because someone feels disconnected. So let's just say your person disconnected from you, forgot all about you in some sort of way, made, at least made you feel that way. And now all of a sudden it's your turn to kind of forget about them and let go. And when you do that, this creates some kind of a coming back together. So again, it's not a game. You're not doing it to get this, but when you naturally just let go and you finally just say, you know what? I'm not in control. I'm not in control of another person. I'm not in control of this journey. I'm not in control of somebody else's healing and what they want, and what they don't want. When we finally let go of those concepts that we can control other people, it's amazing how things just naturally just come into our vibrational match. It's beautiful. So I feel like the lessons right now is this king and queen are doing something different. And so because of this, it's creating the connection. It's creating a new beginning in this connection. That's pretty amazing. And then we have new story on the bottom of the deck, unconditional love. This unconditional love now can begin in this connection as in you really truly understand the unconditional love brought you to this place. Wow. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and go into maybe some of the lessons that your person had to go through, maybe some fears that they have had about you. And, and let's just, let's just do that. We're going to go into my dark night of the soul tarot, and we're going to combine it with my twin flame journey shadows and just see where this person was stuck or, and, or currently stuck and what they have had to experience perhaps during these periods of dark times, just feeling maybe rejected, feeling cut off, cut away from you. What does this energy look like? What have they been experiencing and going through because of it? Ruthless. Oh boy. Let's see what this is about. So that's the main energy, ruthless. We have, okay, look at that, five pentacles. <laughs> okay, what I'm getting here from this, you guys, I mean, your person could have been very ruthless in their behavior towards you. They could have really done a number on you. They could have hurt you in a very ruthless type of a way. But it could also be that your reaction, Queen of Swords energy, cut them off, done, they feel left behind now. They do feel cut off from you. So this abandonment energy is coming through very loud and clear. Five of pentacles, feeling left behind, feeling out in the cold, feeling disconnected from you. This does something to your person. This causes them to have to basically recognize something or do something within themselves. See, look at this, the journey of darkness, going back into their dark night of the soul. This is where the journey begins. So you guys needed this to happen. You guys needed to get to this point in this, let's just say journey or connection to be able to get to where you guys are at either today or in the near future. So you guys had to go through these things. We have the nine of rage, nine of wands, overpowered. It's almost like somebody needed to feel overpowered to the point where they just couldn't take it anymore. You needed to get burned out on this person. This person needed to burn you out in order for you to get into this energy to cut them off so that way they could really learn the lesson. Maybe you're that one person that's really teaching them something that other people cannot. Yeah, look, 10 of decay. This is about basically having it all and just throwing it away. 10 of pentacles, you know, castles in the sky. It's just kind of like, wow, you know, that dream, that dream of being together, that dream of just having it all, having a commitment, a relationship, a family, maybe some kids, whatever was the dream with this person. It's just like it had to kind of go, just be crumbled, crumbled and burned down, losing it all, losing the potential of all of it in order to see, look at this unfinished business. But your connection is unfinished. It's a lost relationship that's, that's kind of floating around. It's like lost in space and time right now. But if you guys both want it, you guys can make it work. Okay. You can make it work. You can get it back. 
It takes both people to want that though. And I feel like because you've finally given up and you're letting go, I feel like this person is now going to have a change of heart is what I see here because there is unfinished business between the two of you. You guys may be meant to come together and have these tens of cups and tens of pentacles types of energies together, but you guys could never get there because of someone's, you know, behavior or because someone didn't know what they wanted. So I feel like your person has definitely had to go through some kind of an energy of feeling disconnected with, uh, from you and feel that queen of swords energy from you, but also now feel that very empowered queen of wands energy shift within you to get to this point to where they realized, you know what? I'm not ready to say goodbye. I'm not ready to close the door on this connection. I may want to try again. Let's go ahead and give it another shot. That's what I'm feeling here. That is what I'm feeling here. So uh, let's go ahead and get some let's, unspoken words from your person. How are they feeling towards you? How are they seeing you? Let's take a look at that. We're going to go into Aqua Moonlight's cards. This is the Untold Truths of the Heart Oracle, and this is her newest deck, which is called the Untold Messages of the Heart. So when it comes to you, what is your person thinking, feeling, how do they see things in the material world with you? And what is their soul's energy connected to you? When they think about you, what does this energy look like? We have unconditional. I think it's really interesting because remember you guys at the bottom of the deck, we had unconditional love. That's a new story. I almost feel like whatever energy that you're displaying towards your partner right now is, it feels very queen of wands, unconditional. Like you've just let go and they, they sense this, they see this, they're witnessing it. They're, they might not be getting a reaction from you. They might not be getting that same old behavior from you because you're just allowing and you're letting go. So they're seeing you in a new light. See, I can't be apart from you much longer. Oh my God, because you've surrendered them. It's like literally causing them to feel like they can't handle this much longer. The longer that you just surrender and you're just receptive and allowing, it actually creates this response in your person. <laughs> That's interesting. All right, let's go ahead and see the emotions. Okay, so they, they are feeling your energy. Like they're dreaming about you. They're imagining you. They're thinking about what life would be like if you guys decided to give this another chance. They're envisioning something. We have energy. It says, you've been thinking about me because I've been thinking about you. We're connecting. So it's like you guys are definitely connected in the heart space through your energy. They're thinking a lot about you. They're dreaming about you. It's definitely there. And the thing is, even though you've let them go, I'm sure you still think about them, right? Or else you probably wouldn't be watching this video, but they're, they're feeling you. You're thinking a lot about them too, because they're connecting with you in their heart space. What about the physical world? What's the energies of the physical world? Wow. Commitment, promises, and fidelity. Now, for some of you, if you are in a third party situation, it could be that there is some sort of another relationship that is a factor here. But that's not going to be for everybody if your person is single, because that did come through the reading as well. I feel like there's two collectives I'm talking to here. This means that they may be seeing you as that person that they could actually go the whole distance with, that they could, could do this 10 of pentacles, 10 of cups energy with, right? We have magnet. I keep being drawn back to you and I can't quite explain why. See, you're that person for them. You're the only person that they can actually see themselves ending up with, period. So when they think about happily ever after, when they think about what that marriage would look like, what that family would look, look like, you're that person that fits that description. No one else. And what is their overall soul energy? We have time, weight, cycles, infinity. So it could be that they're waiting for the right time. It could be that there's something about maybe right now, they're just kind of waiting to see what happens. They're waiting for perhaps a cycle, something to cycle through. They could be waiting to see how you deal with something. They could be testing you in some strange way. 
We have gentle. I am staying away from you because the last thing that I want to do is hurt you. You know, it's really beautiful. So maybe they don't feel like they're 100% ready. They're thinking about it. They're feeling all these things, but maybe they're not sure if their energy, like where they're at or what they're doing, maybe there's something about them that feels like they might end up hurting you again. So they might be staying away from you at this time because they don't want to hurt you. I'm also getting to that maybe they're kind of waiting to see, has your energy changed? Are you going to be gentle or are you still going to be in that queen of swords energy? So they're waiting for some kind of just something to shift or change. And I feel like the longer that you stay away, it actually hurts this person more. And so it causes them to want to come towards you. So continue to bide your time, you guys, for better results. And I'm getting here at the bottom of the deck within a few months. Something's going to shift and happen with this person. They may make contact with you within a few months time. Whoa, because we have time. And then on the bottom of the deck was an actual time frame of within a few months. Yeah. Spirit is working in mysterious ways in this reading for someone. So let's go ahead and see when your person fantasizes, fantasizes about this connection with you. What are they envisioning? What does this fantasy look like? What do they want with you? What are the true intentions? This right here is called the sacred journey. Um, I'm sorry, the sacred journey, sacred healing journey by angelic revelation 144. Oh my God, I can't talk. What do they want with you? Wow. We have love and romance, but we also have mountain. There's challenges around this romance. Your partner wants to romance you and show you their love, but there's challenges here. It says facing fears, challenges, and overcoming obstacles. So the mountains could be, of course, the mountains that have been created by you or them or just outer circumstances. But they definitely want to show you some sort of love and romance. We also have um, musical messages. So there could be certain um, songs that you're hearing that remind you of them. I'm also getting they're probably hearing certain songs or messages through songs that are helping them to just kind of deal with whatever obstacles or challenges or fears that they're facing about this love and romance. We have repair. They want to repair this. They seriously want to make amends with this connection. And they might have a very strange way of showing this, but they do have it in their heart space. And we have universe seeing beyond the veil. I feel like what's happening in the world right now does affect this situation. That could be a part of the uh, challenges at this time. It's very challenging to come together with what's happening with travel restrictions and just, you know, the whole distance and everything like that, that, you know, everybody's being told they need to do. And so there could be that, but this person does want to repair things. They do want to give you some sort of a message that is a very loving and kind message. And they do want to repair this, but it could be that they're still trying to overcome some ab obstacles or fears within them. And so you need to see beyond the veil. You need to see that this person maybe is not returning at this time. Try not to take it personally as in they don't care about me. We can clearly see that there is some sort of change that's happening with this person. And you're pretty much at that point where you're just like, you know what? I'm just kind of burned out. I'm burned out on this whole situation. I'm burned out with caring about this, or I'm just not necessarily caring, but I'm burned out worrying about this, obsessing about it, thinking about it, planning my life around it. And because you've made this shift in your energy, I'm telling you, it has created some sort of major shift within your person. So that's what they truly want. They see you as a part of their plan, but they do see that there are some obstacles that do need to be overcome and there's some things that need to be rep uh, repaired. And so they might be waiting for a particular time or something to change in the world in order for that to happen. But it's definitely there. It's definitely there. So what kind of energetic arrows of love are you guys sending to one another? Let's take a look. This is my arrows of love oracle. Okay, so this is an arrow of love that's coming from them. We have rose-colored glasses. Your person has got those rose-colored glasses on with you. I mean, they are seeing you through a lens of fantasy. They've got you up on a pedestal. They're, they're focusing on all of your best traits. So I don't feel like your person is um, angry with you, and I don't feel like they are looking at you in a negative. They might be trying to, but I feel like they just can't. They can't see you in a negative light at this time. 
So we're gonna go into these uh, Twin Flame Journey messages here. I miss you. See, I miss you regardless of how things seem. So your person does think about you and they miss you. They've got rose colored, colored, colored glasses on right now and they can't help but see you in a very positive light. What arrows of love are you sending their way? We have cloud nine. So you guys might be mirroring each other as in you guys do see each other in this very high vibrational energy. You might always see the best traits in your person, but you might be feeling like, you know what, where has that gotten me kind of energy? You know, where has that gotten me in the past? So you might be trying to be a little bit more logical and practical with your thoughts, but I feel like regardless, you still come back to that cloud nine energy because they're a part of your dream. They're a part of your, let's just say 10 of cups or 10 of pentacles. See, my family and my upbringing are a bigger factor than I realized. So what you're saying to them is that even though you might have them in this cloud nine energy, a part of your fantasy, you still realize that maybe perhaps that your upbringing and your values and traditions are a little bit different than this person's. And so you're willing to see this person not through rose colored glasses. You're willing to take that cloud nine energy and kind of take yourself out of the clouds and really focus more on seeing things very balanced within your heart space, but also from a logical, practical, rational standpoint. You realize that there are bigger factors here than just you love this person. There's more that's going to be required than just that. There's going to have to be more than just this connection or this attraction or whatever you're feeling in your heart space. You realize that there's other things that are factors that may not you know, let's just say work, or that may provide challenges that you're not sure that you can deal with, that you're not willing to settle. So this person is really going to have to bring forth some sort of change. They're going to have to take some sort of action. They're going to have to do something, show you some sort of change in their physical world or something, bring you something tangible, show you that they've changed or something, or else I'm getting here that you may not take this person back. Just because this person comes back doesn't mean that you have to take them back. You might find that when they do come back, that you're just really not that interested anymore, especially if they're not bringing you that King of Pentacles energy, you know, that energy of I'm ready. I've changed. I'm ready to really make a commitment. I'm not just going to say the words. I'm actually going to follow through. I'm going to take this action. So let's see what this person's possible future energies will be towards you in this connection. Can they change? Well, of course, anybody can change if they really, really want to. What is this person's, not necessarily their true intentions, but what, what is the possibility that this person can change in the future? What is the possibility that this person can change in the future to be the person that you need them to be? We have bound. We have crossroads. They're going to have to make a decision. They're going to have to basically remove themselves from behaviors that have, they've been bound to for quite some time. This is behaviors that haven't done them any good. And they certainly haven't done relationships, especially your connection, any good. They're going to have to part ways with it. Whatever this is, whatever this, this energy of being bound and maybe being a victim, victim from or to their pain or bound to their past or whatever the hell this is, they're going to have to make a conscious choice to basically step away from it. So can they? Well, of course they can. We do have page of cups, which is message of love. This is somebody who's saying all the right things, but are they actually doing something to change? We have five of swords. So again, this is about mind games and control. So this person might have some real issues where they play a lot of games. They play um, like they need to be in control. They are afraid to be vulnerable. They're afraid to basically come from, you know, a genuine heart space, because if they do that, then they put their heart on the line. Can they do that? Or is it just, does it feel better for them to constantly play with people and victimize people because it makes them feel in control? Yeah, they got a transition. And this tells me here, can this person change? Absolutely, if they want to. They can transition this energy. They can have a death and rebirth. Absolutely, it can happen. You know, will it? No cards, no reader, no person on this planet can predict that for sure. But is it possible? Yes. Anything is possible. This person can change if they really want it. 
So they're at a crossroads, I feel. Do they want to continue to be in this energy of just kind of page of cups, flirty, no big deal, giving crumbs, offering crumbs, getting crumbs? Or do they actually want to get results? In order for this person to part ways with this energy of the past, crumb crap, crap crumbs, right? Whatever that is, do they want to go towards something that is going to sustain them? Do they want to really experience that 10 of pentacles, 10 of cups energy? The choice is theirs, or they can continue to waste time for the rest of their lives and stay in this, this these very shallow types of energies. They absolutely have the choice to do that. So what does spirit want you to know and understand at this time when it comes to this person? What is their advice? What do they want you to understand and know? We're going to go into these messages here, which is my twin flame angel numbers cards. What does spirit want you to know and understand at this time? This one right here is called my signs from spirit love oracle. We have black, lack, rebellion, pessimism. We have gray. Interesting. We're getting all the darker colors, depressed, detached, unemotional and force hammer. Oh my gosh. It's like taking the sledgehammer and getting rid of all that gray and black energy, you know? There is nothing wrong with being balanced between dark and light because we, of course, are all made up of dark and light. So it doesn't mean that people have to be completely 100% in the light and perfect. It's not really about that. But we've got to get to a gray area. This black energy isn't going to work anymore. And that black just represents the, the lack. It represents pessimistic attitudes. It represents darkness within ourselves that's not balanced. You know, gray also is kind of like somewhat detached, unemotional, maybe even gloomy and depressed, like those gray clouds in the sky. We've got to take that sledgehammer and get rid of that energy. So it is going to take some force. It is going to take courage and, and, an actual, um, it's going to take, I, I don't know what the word I'm looking for effort. That's what it is. It's going to take effort on someone's part to get rid of this energy. So we can't just wish upon a star and wish that it will happen. We can't just, you know, hope for the best, but this someone has to take that sledgehammer and take action. There has to be some sort of change here. So spirit wants us to understand that can't force someone to change. They have to choose it. That's another thing. We have one, two, two, one. So twelve, twenty one. Learn to provide your own happiness rather than relying on this person to fulfill you. So spirit is telling you here that you have to force yourself out of this energy. If you feel sad, if you feel pessimistic, if you feel unemotional and detached and depressed now and gloomy, because maybe you're realizing that this person is not fulfilling your needs. They're not fulfilling you. They're not, they're not getting on board with your 10 of cups or your 10 of pentacles, um, you know, dream rather than putting your dreams and all of your hopes and your fantasies on this person you need to learn to provide your own happiness. And I feel that that is actually happening. And this is literally forcing this person to now get on board with you because you've changed your vibration. So you're already doing this or you're about ready to do this. So when you change your vibration, literally people that are connected to you are then forced to level up with you or fade away. And that's what's happening here. So if you guys are seeing you know, 12s or 21s, or maybe a combination of 11s and 22s. That is a reminder from spirit that you need to learn to provide your own happiness, you know, rather than relying on this person, because when you do that, you're going to actually be, you know, let down. When we put our eggs into other people's baskets, we are naturally let down because other people cannot provide for us fully what we're looking for. We have to learn to provide those things on our, on our own. 
We have 666, not an evil number. I don't want to hear it. This right here is about high vibrations. It's about raising your vibration, stepping into your inner child. So our inner child is a very happy energy. It's quite the opposite of darkness, but it's also about addressing old wounds and restoring a sense of wonderment, seeing things from a child's perspective, you know, choosing to be happy rather than getting, dr you know, dragged down and all of the crap that's happening in the world, perhaps, you know, just learning to enjoy a sunny day or learning to enjoy nature, just being outside, you know, um, going for a walk and just feeling really just good about what you see being, you know, in that sense of wonderment of what the universe has to offer just in nature. So this is about connecting to your inner child and really learning to love yourself all over again. I do feel like what spirit is telling you here too, is that your person has some old wounds that need to be addressed. And so you can't restore them. You can't fix them. You can't really help them unless you help yourself. When you help yourself, if you and them are energetically connected, it literally forces this person to have to level up with you or fade from your life. And I'm getting either way, something has to happen because it's been too much time wasted already. So it's a do or die situation. It's a shit or get off the pot situation in this reading today. So spirit wants to remind you of these things. Remind you of these things. So let's now end this reading because I feel like we pretty much used everything that I put out here and just get some overall messages for the, for the person, the viewer here, the viewer watching this video. What uh, closing messages does spirit have for you? What do they want you to focus on, maybe even work on, or just kind of consider moving forward? This right here is called When Spirit Speaks by Heather Filona, Medium on a Mission. And I'm actually going to be on her podcast, not this Thursday, but the following Thursday. So you know, I think like two weeks from now, and um, it's going to be through her channel. So I'll, of course, list things, you know, when that's coming up on my um, Instagram and things like that. But um, we're going to just be talking about a, a bunch of different things. So it's kind of like a Q and a for me, you know, kind of get to know me on all different types of levels. So if you guys are interested, she's going to be putting that together. Okay. And then let's go ahead and combine this with the Hanson Roberts tarot. stable earth sign. Whew. We started this reading in earth sign energy. So if you're an earth sign watching this video, Cap uh, Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus, and you've been resonating with these messages, this is definitely your reading today. I just want to say that. Hey, the star. This is about healing this is about the divine being with you. This is about the divine guiding you, everything that is meant for you. You will be receiving signs from spirit that you can count on. This is about just really focusing on healing yourself, restoring yourself, having faith that you are going to be taken care of, that you are going towards your destiny and you are going towards that ultimate happiness. And whether it's with this person or it isn't this person, it doesn't matter. You are being taken care of at the end of the day. Why? Because you are committing to taking care of yourself. And when we do that, the universe has no choice but to facilitate that has no choice but to match our vibration. Do you see? So when we're in that vibration of allowing, receiving, being receptive, being okay, being non-attached, but we're not non-attached in a negative way, we're just allowing, it's beautiful. It's very stable energy, very stable energy. What else? See, you're just open. You're just, you're just open. You're open to the experience. You're open to life. You're open to whatever spirit sees fit for you. You are open to loving. You're open to healing. You're open to whatever is just in store. You are allowing. Sorry, there was way too many cards that popped up here. So let's just get one card. Oh my gosh. You're, you're, you're just, you're open to working towards something. 
you're open to working on a new project perhaps you're open to doing things differently moving forward whatever you're just ready for the ride wherever spirit wants to take you next you're open to it and i'm getting here that it may have something to do with doing like working working in a new way offering services in a new way you're open to the experience of wherever this is supposed to take you last message and we have water sign emotions so we have earth and water sign so there could be perhaps a water sign of significance, or this could be that this is a sign for you to open yourself up more to your emotions. Emotions are very, you know, um, like receptive type of energy. It's very psychic energy as well. This is about purging. This is about if you feel like you want to cry, cry, purge it, purge this energy. That there could be perhaps a water sign of significance that could be a part of three of pentacles working with your emotions in some sort of creative way, being open to it, being receptive. And I have the page of pentacles. So the page of pentacles is about an idea. The page of pentacles is about, you know, some sort of an offer could be in an emotional offer. Somebody being in their emotions, thinking about, is that what I want? Being open perhaps to possibilities, new things in the future. So I feel like the person that's watching this video, you've done a lot of work on yourself. You've come a long way. And because of this now, all of a sudden, the universe is putting you into alignment with what's meant for you. If it's this person, it's naturally going to just occur. If it's not this person, I feel like spirit is bringing something to you. This is a gift and it could be someone who's a little bit more stable, somebody who's a little bit more open emotionally, somebody who wants to grow and heal and work together rather than working against you. They want to work with you. So I feel like it's very open-ended. Be open to the possibility of just future happiness with the right person. It doesn't have to be this person. I feel like the less, the, the, the more that you are less attached to a particular person as in it has to be them. It has to be them. That's when you're going to get yourself in a situation where, what if it's not? What if it's not this person? You need to be open to the possibilities, perhaps, that there is something of value out there for you. And you're going to meet up with that at some point. Or your person, whoever this is, whoever's meant for you to meet you halfway is just going to naturally open themselves up to the experience and allow themselves to, you know, meet you there. So whatever this is, I feel like at the end of this reading spirits telling you you're headed in the right direction. And if the person that you invested all of this time and energy into, if they're open as well, and they're open to healing and they're open to the signs and the guidance that they're receiving and they want to work together this could possibly be them coming through because i already did see in this reading that this person is having some sort of change of heart they're wanting to communicate they're wanting to offer something so they could literally be showing up as in you get your wish at the very end what you've always wished and hoped for is suddenly now happening so let go. Be open to the possibilities. Be open to all possibilities. When you do this, you open yourself up to receiving. And that's why we've got this very stable energy. And then we've got this very receptive, we are receiving something type of an energy. And it makes you feel very emotional, but you're feeling very stable and you feel very guided and you feel like you can have faith in something. There's like a res restoration of faith and belief in just life, love, everything. And now you're suddenly working towards what you've always wanted to work on. So it's, it's really fabulous, you guys. So anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this reading. Thank you so much for watching. And if this particular reading did not resonate with you this week, no worries. You may be, um, you know, you may resonate with something uh, later on that I put out during the rest of this week. All right. Take care, you guys. Bye.